ISP routers suck, but I don't think I'm telling you guys anything new here. So let's try and build it better. What's up guys, Jack here with MTS, and I've built a few Microtik router OS boxes, a few PFSense boxes. I have some PFSense boxes in deployment, but I figured let's take a look at it with some modern hardware. So I picked up a Raspberry Pi and tried to run PFSense on here. It was a terrible experience and I don't recommend it. But then Ace PC hit me up and offered me any PC I wanted. So I chose their CK6. And this thing comes with Windows 10 Pro and stuff. It's got an i5, eight gig of RAM, 120 gig SSD. You can put a two and a half inch SATA drive in here, but I don't care about using it as a Windows desktop. I care about using it as an appliance. And where this thing shines as an appliance is the fact that it has dual gigabit NICs and a serial port on board. It also has native VGA, so without any adapters, I can hook it into a KVM system. Let's see how well this thing can run PFSense. Now the first step in building a PFSense box is first downloading and creating a bootable USB of PFSense. So go to the PFSense website, click on downloads, and then you wanna click on download AMD x86. You also wanna make sure that you're using the Memstick installer and that you have VGA set as your console output. Seeing as this box also has serial output, you could set it up that serial is your main output, but I prefer VGA for that, so I'm gonna go ahead and download the VGA version. But then we're gonna throw it all into Rufus, giving it our USB stick called Slim Thick and our PFSense ISO and make it a bootable USB. Hey guys, sorry, webcam editing Jack here. So my recording messed up for the first little bit of the installation. All I really did so far was plug in the USB to the computer and tell it to boot from USB. And then PFSense ran through its initial just kind of scrolling wall of text. So now we can get into the rest of the installation. All right, we're gonna click on accept and we're gonna click install PFSense. Now I'm gonna go continue with the default key map auto UEFI here, the entire disk is what we want to use for this. This is a 120 gig disk, so I'm just going to use the whole thing. But if you want to partition it up to, you know, dual boot or do really anything else with that, that might need a separate partition, you can go ahead and create partitions, but I'm just going to use the entire disk here. So I'm going to tell it the GUID partition label. ADA0 is our main disk and DA0 is our USB. So I want to select ADA0 and commit, and it's going to install all right, we're just gonna tell it to reboot. And I'm good to pull my USB sticks, that way it's not gonna boot from USB. And we're gonna reboot the computer one last time here. I didn't pull my USB sticks soon enough, so we should be able to just fire it up one more time here. And look at that, we're in PF Sense. It's gonna come up here, and next we just need to configure our IP addresses and our interface. Now I have interface zero set up as my WAN port and interface one set up as my LAN port. And by set up, I just mean labeled because I just used a little label maker here on the device itself to put some nice little labels for WAN and LAN. I also wrote the IP address on the side here, just so that way I know. I'm gonna say VLANs are not gonna be set up right now. I'm also gonna tell it that enter the WAN interface, RE0. That is our first interface, the interface closest to the left side of the computer. So I'm gonna say RE0, RE0. And for our LAN interface is gonna be RE1. And that's how I wanna proceed. So now that we're at this console interface here, I'm gonna type in two for set interface IP addresses. And I'm gonna say enter our LAN IP address here and I'm gonna change this to 192.168.2.1 forward slash 24. For a WAN, enter the new I LAN IPv4 upstream gateway address. I'm gonna hit enter. For the LAN IPv6, hit enter. I do want to enable the DHCP server, so I'm gonna hit enter. Start of the DHCP range, I'm gonna do 192.168.2.30. And the end, I'm gonna do 192.168.2.30. Let's just say 200. That sounds like a good amount of range. Do you wanna to revert to HTTP as the web configurator protocol? I'm gonna go ahead and say no for right now. And we should be good to go. Now I'm gonna hit enter to continue and we are done with our configuration for now. Now we're gonna jump into the web GUI on my desktop. So I have some network jacks here built into my desk. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug into one of my switches here and we're gonna give this a WAN connection. 
and I'm gonna take LAN and feed that into my desktop here. So I'm gonna crawl under my desk here. Now that my desktop is connected to our new PFSense box, I'm gonna type in its WAN IP. So that's 192.168.2.1. That should take us here. And the username is admin and the password is PFSense. Those are the default credentials. And now we just have to hit accept and close. Now it will take you to a different page than this at first. I've already logged in here once. So that's why it took me to this landing page. But I'm gonna click change the password in user management. I'm gonna change the password from PFSense2. I'm just gonna call it password because that's so much more secure. I will change all of these credentials once I actually put this into production. So I wanna do a throughput test here and see how much we're able to route. So I'm gonna run an iPerf test here. I've unplugged my fiber line. So we are getting about gigabit going through this guy. Yeah, so this is able to route at full gigabit. I wanna turn on some of the more advanced security features and stuff like that. Maybe load this guy up with some more um, plugins and really see what it can do. But that'll be a, a later video than this. This is just a basic installation and I do wanna set up a second network. The next thing I wanna do is create a separate guests network. This is just gonna be for all of my guests that come over to my house. So that way they're on a completely separate network that can't see any of my devices and my devices can't see their devices. Now you can repeat these same steps for an IOT network and then just change you know, the name to IOT or whatever you want. So to get started with that, we wanna come over here to interfaces at the top and click on assignments. Then we wanna come over here to VLANs and I'm gonna add a new VLAN and its parent interface should be WAN, but that's already populated for us. VLAN tag, I'm just gonna use 30. That's a VLAN I'm not using right now. And for description, I'm just gonna call this guests, guest network. And we can hit save. Then we wanna come over here to interface assignments and click on our VLAN 30 right here, our guest network and hit add on available network ports. Hit save. And this gives us this OPT1. We wanna select this enable the interface and rename it. So I'm gonna call this guest net. And for IPv4 configuration, I wanna set a static IPv4. And for IPv4 address, I'm gonna give it a 192.168.30.1. And it's gonna be a slash 24 network. So 255.255.255.0. And for upstream gateway, we're just gonna hit none, that's fine. And click on save and click apply changes. Next, once that's done, we can come over here to services, DHCP server, because we wanna have DHCP on this network. We can come over here to guest net. And I'm not sure why it didn't have a space there, but there should be a space there. Enable DHCP server on guest net interface. We wanna enable that. And we're gonna come down here and assign our range. So I'm gonna do 192.168.30.30, just go with that, to 192.168.30.200. We could also assign some static IP addresses here if we wanted to do that. I don't really care about doing static IPs right now. I tend to do static IPs from the device itself, not from the router. So it's just two different ways that you can do the same thing. Now that we have our DHCP server set up, we wanna come over here and add some firewall rules. We go to firewall and rules, and we can come over here to our guest net. Now, we're gonna to need to add a rule that's gonna allow all of the network traffic from the guest network to get out to the internet. So we wanna do pass, interface guest net, protocol any. And we're gonna come down here and just give it a name. I'm just gonna call it guest internet access. Sure, we'll go with that weird capitalization there. <laughs> Save that. We also need to create another rule that's gonna block the guest network from being able to see our LAN network. So to do that, we're gonna add another rule. We're gonna do this add above here. This would put this rule beneath our current rules. We wanna add it above our current rules. So we're gonna add it to the top. We're gonna choose action as block, interface guest net protocol any to our destination network, which is gonna be the LAN network. And we can just call this block guest from LAN and hit save. Now we can apply these changes here. 
and that's gonna apply those for us. But I also wanna block our LAN network from being able to see the guest network. Again, I want these networks to be completely separate with no overlap. So I'm gonna go over here to LAN and I'm gonna hit add. And we're gonna choose block protocol any destination guest net. We're gonna call this block LAN from guest. And once we hit apply changes, we should now have two completely separate networks all set up. And that's just about it for our setup stuff. So I'm gonna actually go and deploy this as my main home router, because right now I'm still on the stupid AT&T router. So I'm really happy with this little Ace PC. It's dead silent under my desk. It has a fan in it, but it really only turns on at boot and then just kind of stays off. So I'm happy with this little Ace PC and I'll make a video in the coming months letting you guys know how this has worked out for me. But so far, I don't see any problems with it and I'm looking forward to using PFSense as my main home router again. But anyway guys, thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you're not already. I'll also leave a link to where you can get this little Ace PC down on Amazon. But uh, yeah, I'm really interested to see how this is gonna work in my daily deployment because I have not used PFSense here at my house in a number of years. But anyway guys, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.